Good morning, Great Church. You know, I've, um, I've heard a fair bit of talk about the particularly difficult situation we find ourselves in. With um, got some political instability, economic stability, and of course the COVID pandemic, which has a lot to do with those things. And I've heard some people talk about, I know everything. Um, I know everything seems to be falling apart. Society seems to be collapsing from within, and um, particularly in the media, but also from other Christians, it looks like we're in the time, uh, the end times, and that, that's how. That's how. Um, really dreadful everything seems to be at this, at this time. And, um, and it is quite true um, that a lot of us are going through a really, really tough spot. Um, people who have lost their jobs, which is no small thing with, um, at all. And um, some people, um, not, I'm not sure how they're going to pay off their mortgage and, um, and uh, maybe lost loved ones and all, all sorts of difficult, difficult places. And, um, and so I find myself taking comfort Oddly enough, in um, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9, which is where um, the, t- uh, the unnamed teacher says, um, what has been will be again. Uh, what has been done will be done again. And there is nothing new under the sun. And um, it's probably quite curious. So the first time I read through Ecclesiastes, it seems sort of nihilistic, like nothing matters and all that sort of thing. But um, in actuality, what it's, what it's really saying, um, at least it seems to me, is that... Um, Every situation you find yourself in uh, has a precedent um, that people have gone through uh, uh, your particular struggle before. And and, uh, you might even know people today who have gone through a similar situation as you. And that means there's help to be had. And um, not least of all, in terms of this, is is Jesus Christ. Um, And I want to really talk about when he walked through the wilderness and, um, and fasted for 40 days and nights. Um, now you could say that was probably quite a rough spot for him. It actually says that he um, that he was hungry at the time, which is a bit of an understatement. Like, um, don't know about you, I've I've been quite fortunate in the sense that I haven't had to wonder where my meals were coming from, and I knew where I was going to sleep at night, and I knew what clothes I was going to wear the next um, the next day. But um, but Jesus had. Um, uh, but I, I certainly, I certainly have had an instance where I may have skipped lunch one day, and it sort of catches up to you by dinner time. But Jesus hadn't eaten at all for forty days, and so in this point, he's hungry. There's a sort of moment of vulnerability here, and um, and the great tempter himself, Satan, um, tries to poke at that vulnerability. And here it says in Matthew chapter four, verses three to four, it says the tempter came to him and said, "If you were the son of God." Tell these stones to become bread, and of course, if any of us knows um, knows about Satan to any degree, we know that he is the father of lies. He's the master of manipulation and deception. And if anybody is able to make a completely perfect man turn from uh, turn from righteousness, turn from God's will for him, it's it's this guy. This guy who's the master of manipulation, deception, and so Jesus' answer is truly, truly brilliant. Um, and, it says in, uh, and it says, Jesus answered, It is written, uh, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And this is absolutely astonishing to me. And the reason being is, um, in terms of the physical form, uh, food gives, us, gives our body strength. It gives us the resources, the materials we need in order to act in order to walk, in order to wander, in order to breathe even. Um, and yet Jesus is saying that is not his only source of strength. Now it does say um, man doesn't live on bread alone, which does imply you still need to eat, but it's not the only source of strength. And in fact, it's not his primary source of strength. His source of strength is God has promises for my life and he's, going to, and he's going to see those promises through. And I'm going to be in this position right now where my, where my stomach is gnawing at me from the, ins- from the inside. It's painful. But, but God, has, God has a plan and purpose for my life. And he's going to take me through this wilderness. And, um, and thus I go back to Ecclesiastes because as, as we see, Jesus, has, Jesus actually quoted scripture here. The scripture he quoted is from Deuteronomy. And um, we also see in the book of Psalms, um, and we all, um, a lot of us will know this. It says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Don't have a slide for this one, but 
Um, but you see that situation, it's a similar situation. In this in, uh, instance could be likened to the valley of the shadow of death. He's going through a really tough time. Um, his, his very survival seems to be in, in jeopardy after not eating for a long time, um, being in the wilderness where there's pretty, pretty much nothing. And, um, but, God, but God's with him. God's strength is pulling him through. And, um, and, uh, and we also know the verse, a lot of us, uh, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And that was from Proverbs. Um, and so we've got this sort of, and so we have this sort of um, pattern here from, we've got Deuteronomy, the time of Moses and the Israelites. They're being led through, um, they're being led through the wilderness in order to go to the promised land. They, um, God, ha- God made sure they were fed. God f- uh, gave them manna uh, from heaven and, and they were fed. And even though it was a difficult journey, they made it, they eventually made it to the promised land. And we see with the story of David, and this is why I brought up the Psalms, um, we see that um, before he became king, he was, he was alone, hunted down by, uh, by King Saul's forces from pretty much every direction. And, um, and he drew on God's strength. In all his ways, he acknowledged the Lord and the Lord directed his path. And we saw that the promise that he would become king was fulfilled. And he went from this state where his whole country, the army of his nation was hunting him down and he became the king. And then of course, back, um, back to Jesus, he, was, he went through that wilderness and he, he became stronger for it. And he went on to defeat death. And so in these situations, we've got a wilderness. We've got a sort of valley of the shadow of death situation. God, uh, uh, the individual in question holds true to God's promises, maybe not necessarily with the Israelites, but God certainly set them straight. And, um, and God took them through. God took them through that wilderness and they emerged from the other end stronger than when they began. And so I want to talk about Romans chapter 8, verses 28, um, which really talks about this. It says, and, um, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And so again, these situations, these struggles we find ourselves in, all at the end of the day, serve the purpose of God. They, um, all, all things will work together for good in the end. And, um, and the, diff- the situation you find yourself in now, wh- whether you have lost your job, um, whether you're not entirely sure if you're going to pay off your house, uh, or the, uh, the rent or the mortgage on your house. Um, it, is, it is a very difficult situation, but God has given you a promise and he will lead you to that promise as long as, you, um, as, long as in all your ways you acknowledge him, and you trust him. He will, he will be there with you. He will walk with you. And um, back to the present um, with God, the coronavirus with our political and economic instability. I've heard some talk of people saying that they're not quite sure the West is, itself is going to get through this and things are going now. I, I don't know what the future is going to hold, but, um, and maybe it's true. Maybe it isn't. I, I, I'm not so sure, but um, e- either way, um, I've, I, there's this, um, there's this something else Steve McCracken said in one of his books. He said, um, I've read the end of the Bible and the good side wins. And um, so in Revelation chapter 22, verse 3, we, we see an image of, um, of the world as it will turn out to be, a, a description of how things are going to end up. Um, and this, of course, is after the tribulation, after, after um, all, kind, all, manner of, all manner of horrific things happen on earth. You've got the mark of the beast. You've got, um, yeah, you've, you've got all, yeah, all sorts of crazy things, all the various scrolls being like, thrown down. And um, that we hit, but we hit this point of eventually after all of that, after all this dreadful, all these dreadful things have happened on earth, we reach this point where the Bible says in, chapter, in uh, Revelation chapter 22, verse 3, no longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night 
and they will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. And and so the and so the sort of prophecy George Orwell had of the if um, you've read. Um, 1984 of this of this metaphorical boot stamping on the human face forever and ever. That's not how this is going to end up. No matter no matter how we end up going down, no matter what happens after the coronavirus or or what what comes next, we don't we don't end up in this place where it's just um, where it's the tribulation forever. What's going to happen is the world's going to be restored. It's going to be made perfect, made as it is, is supposed to be, was always supposed to be, and God's going to reign. And and um, and he's going to reign with us, with him as well. And um, everything will everything will be made whole again. So don't so um so don't don't fear the the valley of the shadow of death, because there is a way through the valley of the shadow of death with the Lord with the Lord giving you strength. And no matter what happens from this point forward, everything turns out all right in the end. So let us pray, Church. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for the promises that you've given us. And I thank you so much that through your strength, your endless strength and your love for us, Lord, that no matter what valley, what difficulties we find ourselves walking through, with the darkness closing in on all sides, you know the way out. You've set our path straight. And I thank you, Jesus, that because of this, we have no need to fear what's going to happen to us. Because, you have, because you've never let us down with any of your promises. Whenever you've made a promise, it's always every single time followed through. And it won't be different this time. And I want to talk a bit and, um, pardon me, I want to thank you for, um, uh, for what you've done on the cross, Jesus. How you've, conquered, how you've conquered sin, the deepest, darkest valley that has plagued humanity for thousands upon thousands of years. And you've taken us out of that through your death and your resurrection on the cross where you defeated sin once and for all so that we no longer have to be stuck there. So I pray for any people who aren't believers who are listening to this message. Um, I pray that you'll give this revelation to them and, um, and I pray that they will come to know who you are and, um, and know to trust and lean on your promises and your words, Lord, because they, because they are the rock, the foundation on which the house is built and on, and on which to live out and on which to live. So thank you very much, Lord Jesus. Amen.